So here I am in my cabbage field. But um, actually, I got, I got a couple of studies that I just wanted to briefly discuss here. And it's really looking at uh, working at trying to develop some of the next generation of insect control products. And so, you know, in the past, we've used insecticides. You know, early on, most of those were, were nerve poisons, the conventional insecticides. Uh, then, then we moved into some other modes of action more recently. This is actually a leap forward and we're looking at genetic approaches uh, uh, to insect control, actually uh, spraying basically DNA in the field uh, to control insect populations. So behind me, I have a cabbage field. Uh, this study ended about two weeks ago. So it's a little bit past its prime, but uh, it, it yielded some very good information. Uh, what we were trying to do was manage diamondback moth. And the reason why we wanted to manage diamondback moth is that it has a tremendous history for developing resistance to insecticides. You know, it's resistant to some of the BT products, the, the pyrethroids you know, in the southeastern United States. If you want a diamondback moth problem, uh, they just say all you have to do is spray a pyrethroid insecticide out there. Knocks back the natural enemies and they flare up. Uh, more recently, uh, even some of the newer products in some parts of the United States are starting to have some tolerance or resistance issues with diamondback moth. And so what we're doing here is we have sprayed some double-stranded DNA, and it, it, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's a type of technology we call RNA interference or RNAi. And so what we do is we, we spray that uh, it, 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 it's coding a specific gene that the diamondback moth larvae needs. And when we spray these levels of it, it silences that gene. So basically that gene that the diamondback moth larvae needed, we're switching off on the larvae and they die. They, they consume it and after a few days, uh, they're gonna die. So in, in this particular study, uh, we've looked at several different treatments. We have commercial standards. Uh, we're looking at chlorantronilaprol. It's used very commonly. Uh, organic growers are using BT, so that's also one of our treatments. What we found last year is as a standalone, the RNAi did not work very well. And the reason is it's so selective, it's only affecting that one species of caterpillar. And we have multiple caterpillars out here. We, we have imported cabbage worm, southern cabbage worm, cabbage loopers, fall army worm. Uh, occasionally we see bead army worm, as well as yellow striped army worm, and lastly, the diamondback moth. And so if you take care of that one caterpillar, you still have other caterpillars. What we saw last year is that we need to incorporate this into more of an IPM program, an integrated pest management program for all the caterpillars that are attacking cabbage. And so we, we looked at that in terms of combining these with other products, alternating it with other products. And so we have different plots in here looking at different ways that we can deploy the RNAi in the cabbage to, to get the, the best crop, get the best level of efficacy, not only for diamondback moth, but while also controlling the other uh, caterpillars in the field. So that's pretty much what we're, go, what, what we're uh, looking at in this particular cabbage field. Rather than have you walk over to the next field behind me, you see an okra field. And I know okra is not a, a, a really big crop for Kentucky. We used okra because Japanese beetles like it so much. And so we're also looking at RNAi technology to control Japanese beetle adults. Uh, we just picked okra because it's easy to grow and it gets eaten by Japanese beetles so fast. And we're, we're getting a lot of damage out there. We're right in the middle of this study uh, and we're probably gonna continue it on uh, next year, but, but make some tweaks uh, with the study. This is the first year we looked at it uh, in the laboratory. It kills all the Japanese beetles uh, within a few days and they stop feeding within two days. We're not quite seeing those results in the field, uh, and that may have to do with the movement of the Japanese beetles between plots. So we'll, we'll, we'll tweak it again last year or uh, next year. But the key is um, you know, we're doing this. We're hoping that we'll have 
some next generation insecticide products uh, available for producers down the road. 